We recorded the segment Global Women Behind the Mic the week of International Podcast Day 2022. And it was not hard to find podcasters, women podcasters, to come forward and say, hey, I'll be a part of the panel. And little did I know that we share a lot of views, women podcasters. We love what we do. We are passionate focus. We are on purpose. We bring the fire. And as you listen, we have podcasters from Belgium and then throughout the United States of America. You're going to find that podcasting is not just a hobby. Podcasting is what we do. Stay with me. She made it. Let's get everybody on the screen. Can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Let me introduce everyone. Um, wow, we are all very strong and vital women. Um, I'm, it almost, it's almost bringing me to tears. <laughs> that we are together the, because we stepped up and we said, yes, we're going to podcast. And we've been doing it for a while so that we were able to be found. You know, so many people don't realize that. But OK, I'm getting off my soapbox. That's for another time. Let me introduce to everyone Gemma Serenity. Gemma Serenity, Serenity Real Talk. Women Breaking the Silence Around Abuse. Gemma, wave your hand at everybody, please. You know, I kind of do these, uh, I kind of do these panel discussions a little bit different. I like to have a lot of fun and give everybody some high. So Gemma, I didn't see a hand wave. Girl, shoot you hit her. You know, I hear from you. Oh my goodness. And Lila, Lila Nort, she is from Belgium. Yeah, the office memo. Oh my goodness. Dr. Pat Simon. Anders, the Prof Life. Oh, I'm so glad that you ladies are here. And Allegra Sinclair, your confident self, your confident self podcast. Isn't that important? And then rounding out this team of experts is Michelle Words, Words with Michelle, the podcast. Oh, my goodness. Let's. <laughs> As everybody can see, we have a diverse team here. And I call you guys a team because everybody is uh, out for impact and you care about your listeners. So I want to ask in, in no certain order, why did you begin podcasting? There's television. There's so many different ways that you could have started communicating. I know that, Michelle, you are a blogger, uh, but... Why podcasting? Somebody want to jump in? I can answer. Go oh, ahead. Actually, with Real Talk, Real Women Breaking the Silence Around Abuse, we are addressing victims hiding in plain sight, victims of some sort of domestic violence, some sort of uh, relationship abuse. And because it's such a delicate topic, because when you are a victim, you are hiding. And when you are hiding, you are not popping up the television to have some inspiration. You are just browsing your phone and listening in the secret of your room to some inspirational content so that you can grab hope, light, and a vision, a guidance so that you may find the strength to break free. So this is why I thought, you know what, a silent, discreet podcast that is still taking off on the world in a discreet manner that you can also just not show that you were listening to that. This and is that so powerful. It opens up the door for your, your guests to be very transparent at that time, to just tell their truth also, correct? Exactly. Because all my guests are strong and powerful women who have prevailed over abusive and, and toxic relationships. And we are talking between each other because we are alike. I am victorious over 15 years of domestic violence, beaten, put down and raped. And that was nine years ago that, we, that it ended. In the meantime, all healing and transformation. And now I'm sharing the mic with other people who have prevailed. So this is why the secret of the podcast that you can listen to Absolutely anonymously. Yeah. 
and then disappear from your phone. You're not being seen. However, you are being filled up. I love that. With hope. I love mm-hmm. that. Someone else, some, some more insights. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you. I can add to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually started my podcast during the pandemic when everyone was locked down. And I started to hear a lot of the messages, uh, similar messages from several friends about um, having difficulty adjusting to change because of course there was a lot of things going on during that time. So my initial reason for starting the podcast was to just talk about being able to adapt to change and, and not only adapt to it, but to embrace change because I'm the type of person that actually loves change and will just throw myself into different things. So throwing myself into the podcast was one of them. (laughs) But um, what appealed to me about podcasting also was because as Gemma said, you can kind of, you still feel like you have a, you're behind the scenes a little bit, that there's, you're not being completely exposed. You're being exposed, I guess, um, intellectually uh, or emotionally, but I guess I, I, I like the fact of podcasting that I didn't have to get in front of the uh, on stage, you know, with cameras and all of those things. The funny thing is now podcasting is totally turned into <laughs> having to have, you know, record and YouTube and being live and all of those things. But what appealed to me initially was that it was something that could be pre-recorded. You know, if you needed to do it again, you could. So it was a more relaxed type of a platform. Um and and I think that that was also a comfort for my guests as well. Uh, you know, when I hear you speak of that, a lot of women say, I don't like, I, I, hey, I'm not sure about getting before a camera every day. I don't want to put on the makeup. Uh, you know, I have a message. I want to get started. But uh, yeah, I'm sticking with the audio and I can totally relate to that. I'm glad that you started, Michelle. This, I'm, I'm really, really glad that you plunged right on in. Somebody else, someone else. Why did you become a podcaster? If I may jump in, um, I started podcasting as well, Michelle, during the pandemic. But actually, it started out as part of my research agenda uh, at my university. And I was given course release time to actually develop the podcast. But then we started, you know, getting into the pandemic and had to flip to online classes totally university shut down. So that took, I had a launch date of like March of 2020. I ended Mm up uh, actually launching in June of 2020. And um, I'd had this idea for a long time. My podcast is This Prof Life, Women of Color in Higher Education. And I deal with women's stories who are working in the academy at all levels, whether it's faculty, staff, administrative, And I allow them to tell the successes, but also the challenges. And we have a lot of solutions and we do a lot of sharing. And uh, the purpose of it is to empower women of color in higher education and because they are a part of the academy, because our experiences are sometimes quite, quite different from other people who teach and are, are administrators. And so I was just really interested in doing this because I'm a former broadcaster, actually, but have been in the academy for 23 years now. Um, And as a tenured full professor and chairing a department and seeing what it took to get there, I wanted to hear other women's stories, too. And um, it's been quite successful. I've been surprised, I guess, by the uh, response to the podcast, because I think I, I researched it before I actually launched it and there wasn't anything out there like this. Uh, talking to women who looks like me or other women of color. And so it was an opportunity to put their voices on the stage and to allow them to uh, tell those stories. And a lot of times people would think it was about griping or complaining or it's going to be a whining podcast, and it's actually not. It's about how well these women are doing and some of the adversities that they've overcome. So um I was so proud last year during a Broadcast Education Association conference, the podcast actually won Best Long Form Production, which was validating for me um, and also for the women who have shared their stories with me. 
but I, I, I love audio anyway. I was, a, as I said, a broadcaster, but I worked in news and I was an anchor and a news director. And I also teach it in the academy now. So this also keeps my skills sharp. But I just love audio because we do create the theater of the mind. We create the theater of the mind. I love that because they in the audience, they are inviting us into their space. Well, I never want to forget that. They are inviting us. Dr. Pat, thank you. And I'm so glad you and Michelle, you decided to just dig right on in. You had done research. You're not a newbie to the arena, but you got started. And look at look at what's going on in your life. Thank you for joining us here today. Two other women. I can't wait to hear your stories because I see a common thread. Go ahead, Lila. Well, actually, I started uh, my podcast for a completely different reason. Um, I'm a podcast producer. And so I have clients and in, I uh, produce podcasts for them. So it would, be, would have been a nice idea to start a podcast myself. So I started The Office Memo and uh, it's about podcasting. So I, we give tips for entrepreneurs and small business owners, but also it's called The Office Memo because we want to make sure that bigger companies also start podcasting. Uh, for example, an internal podcast for a better communication with their, uh, with their employees or a recruitment po podcast, which is, of course, right now a big topic because uh, a lot of companies are not uh, finding the right personnel. So uh, a recruitment podcast could make that, make that difference. You know, the, you can show really um what your company's values are and uh what uh what a, a candidate can can expect so yeah that's why we i started the office memo my clients are usually women of course <laughs> and they're very powerful uh coaches and therapists and um i find it very difficult podcasting myself <laughs> um i'm a big uh introvert so for me audio only is perfect. I like the the fact that it's very uh, intimate. You know, you sit in your own little office and you can really put all your emotion and your 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 power into into your voice and use that to yeah to to teach or to to make a point and yeah it's fantastic. <laughs> It seems it seems as though each and every one of you all have found your niche, your your comfort, not comfortable zone, but you found your lane, your zone, whatever they want to call it. And you guys are working it. Allegra, what say you, dear lady? Well, I'm different as well, but <laughs> I feel old now because yesterday was the 10th anniversary of the first day I published an episode on my show. Um, and I had done a couple of other podcasts before that, similar to Layla, Lila, Lila, um, Lila. Thank you. As an Allegra, you know, it's important to pronounce people's names right. But um, I always knew I was going to do something in audio because when I was young, um, my father was Jamaican. And his love was radio. So we had, he was also a nerd, right? So he's an IBM career guy his whole life. So we had a radio and a computer in our home before we ever thought about television. And I didn't know that was unusual. So I loved the ability for radio to transport me from Kendall Park, New Jersey to wherever it was that we were going. So whether we were listening to music, whether we were listening to soccer, whether we were listening to something educational, the intimacy of audio as a communications form fascinated me. And at the time that I started podcasting for myself versus helping other people, I was working in a front facing media relations position doing public relations for big brands in the States. So I was on camera all the time. So it wasn't that being on camera bothered me necessarily, though I have to admit today, I was like, oh my gosh, how much powder can I put on? But, but it wasn't that being on camera weirded me out. It was just that I craved the connection that I think comes from somebody like inviting you into their ears. So since I began the podcast, I'm different 10 years later. I mean, thankfully, don't we all want to grow as we're moving along? So the podcast is the same voice, but it's providing different things. So um, I started the podcast 
because I had something to say and I was curious as to whether anybody else would be interested in hearing it. And then once I got confirmation that they were interested in hearing it, which some of the pep like, blew my mind. I'm like, wait, people are listening to me. Who are these people? I don't even know 5,000 people. So who are these people who listen to this episode? Did my family listen 5,000 times? <laughs> right? What's happening here? But um, once I figured out the power of that intimate voice, it kind of changed me and changed how I wanted to show up. So I know that there are a lot of people who are all about video and podcasting, and I'm so comfortable saying, yeah, no, miss me with that. For me, it is all about that audio and intimate connection. This is very interesting. I myself am right at home with audio. Uh, I think that is very intimate and you can't, you can't duplicate it. And live stream is good. I thank you ladies for coming on with the live stream today. But yeah, myself with the audio, th there's just nothing like it. This takes me into a question that I didn't have on the sheet. I do tend to get unscripted at times. But listening to you, to you ladies, how important and why you became podcasters, how important is it to you that women look upon you as a role model. I know back in the day, there was a important sports figure who said that he's not a role model. I beg to differ even to this day. But what say you ladies about you all being role models? Allegra, 10 years, kudos. The, hey, what can I say? Dr. Pat, you've been, you've one way or another showing up. But what do you all say about us all being uh, role models, are we? We're not. What do y'all say? Go ahead. Lyle. I would like to say something. Um, well, a fun fact, or probably not so funny. Um, this May, I was at the podcast show in London, which is like a, the biggest podcasting conference. And they said a shocking number, or at least it was shocking to me, like 11% of all the podcasters in the UK are women. Only 11%. And I find that shocking, you know, that, that it's not enough. We women should podcast because there are so many things that we can share. Uh, there are so many things that we can talk about. And yes, I, I do see myself as a role model. I do want to show that the technique is something that you can learn or there's something you can outsource. And... Um, yeah, get that microphone and start practicing and do it because, come on, 11%, that's not enough. I agree with you, Layla. I'm surprised at that yeah. number, shocked. Yeah. And yes. I'm curious now um, because I guess that's maybe UK, what the statistics are in the States. but um, 25%. Yeah. <gasps> not yeah. many. We're still low yeah. on the totem pole, yeah. very wow. low. And I think I mean, it's I, even worse for black women. Oh, yes. Definitely. And women yes. of color. It's growing, yes. but it's even worse when you drill down. So, yeah. yeah. And the importance is that our voices need to be heard. We have different perspectives. And even if it's the same topic that a man may be hosting, our perspectives are different. Our voices are different. And they need to be heard and shared. And our audiences are different. And we'll, um, I think, relate more to what we're saying in our voice. Not only us as hosts, but also our guests. Because I specifically in my podcast only have women as guests at to this point. You know, it could change different, you know, if, if I decide that there's a, you know, a male voice that I think would be important to my audience. But I want to focus on women, and I, you, you're not going to get that type of commitment, I don't think, from a male um, host that would say, I'm going to have a podcast and all of my guests are going to be women. So that, you know, <laughs> we'll be able to share our voices as well, not only as hosts, but also give our guests an opportunity to share their voice as well. I think that podcasting has allowed us uh, to, uh, it's, it's what I call the great equalizer. It gives the opportunity for, as Michelle said, different voices to be heard that could not be heard traditionally on legacy mediums. 
uh, such as a radio. Not everybody could have a radio show. Not everybody could have a television show. We know with social media and the internet, that has changed. But I think it has become an empowering tool for voices at all levels. And that's what I love about it. And it's it's not hard to produce. It's inexpensive. So that's not going to be a barrier to people who really want to do it. You know, with a phone, you could do it on a phone and with a, a built-in microphone and get started. And then as you begin to prol- proliferate and make more money, you can then go bigger as Lila is with a producer or something like that. But the beauty of podcasting is, and especially for women, is it's just a very inexpensive entryway into the world and sharing your voice for whatever topic it is. Go ahead, Gemma. I, I wholeheartedly agree with all of you. 11% is a staggeringly low number. I understand that in the US is 25%. But honestly, when we are women, we have a duty to show up to raise our hands, and not only that, to not care about the naysayers, to speak up because we are attracting our tribe, we are attracting our supporters, we are attracting our audience, and everyone has a voice and everyone deserves to be heard by their audience. And the fact that the audience is overlapping on each other, it's totally fine. Nobody is cannibalizing anybody anyway, meaning that we all have our place. And there is nothing like, because I'm a woman and even worse, a woman of color, I shall keep silent. I would say the contrary, because I'm a woman, I speak up. And because I'm a woman of color, I speak up louder. Right. I also think that I believe that the number is disproportionate. Absolutely. Women versus men. But I also wonder, who did you ask? Because sometimes if I'm in a room and there's 20 men in the room and I ask 20 men a question, I'm going to get a male answer. So sometimes I look a little bit askance at the research because I'm like, guess what? If you hang out with the same people who you already know, you're going to get the same kinds of answers. So I believe that the numbers are probably a little bit higher for us, but not high enough. And that's part of the problem. Why aren't we included more, right? Why don't they think more about voices outside of theirs, inside the, I'm in a podcasting mastermind. We always talk about Bob because every time they want to do a podcasting survey, they ask Bob, well, what about Linda? and Gemma and Layla, right? But they always ask Bob what Bob thinks. So then the results are skewed by Bob. But I think um, when you talk about being a role model, my first thought was, I don't know if I'm that. But what I do think I am is a living permission slip to do something that they want to do. So if you're telling yourself you can't be a podcaster because all the podcasters you see look different than you, okay, well, you can be a podcaster who's different right? You can be tall, you can be short, you can be whatever it is that you want to be. So I think if I broaden the definition of role model to that, yes, I'm really comfortable saying that I'm a role model in that way, in that I just don't believe in limits. And I have endured enough loss that I don't have a lot of fear anymore. So from that perspective, I'm like, okay, I'll call myself a role model. If it encourages somebody else to show up and tell their story, then yes. But I'm with, I think it was Charles Barkley, right? Who said that I'm with whatever mm-hmm. sports person said, I'm not a role model. I'm like, oh, you kind of are, but you get to decide what that feels like to you. I like that. I like this conversation. Yo, and it was Sir, Sir Charles. I'm listening to you ladies. And it seems as though podcasting has caused each and every one of you all to evolve and to grow and to really plant seeds in this world. Now, you know, we live in a world where how old you are makes a difference. So what say you all about ageism? Ageism in in broadcasting, ageism in podcasting. Has anyone run into that that problem? Or I don't even know what to call it. It's just something I read about. Something happened to a broadcaster not too long ago. And it was because they said because of her gray hair, whatever. what say you all to podcast? Is that valid? I mean, does that happen to us 
female podcasters in podcasting. Oh, you're too old. You, you know, you better go on to wherever because uh, you, you're washed up. You're done. What say you ladies to that? Can I answer that one? Yes. I mean, this is very inspiring. Thank you, Brenda. Um, I have white hair and I'm 43 years old. I, only one time I went live on Facebook and I told for 10 minutes my story. And I got one comment. Oh, pretty, pretty lady. And right after, oh, old lady. Like a arc. And I was there, what? Hey, respect. Do you know what it takes as a life experience to go through all those white hair? Do you know what it takes in terms of hardship? Do you know what it takes to be built through the fire of life? No, you don't because you're probably, I don't know, 15 or 16 years old. You consider like it's just impossible to be that old. Please. So what I am, I'm going to say about that real question about age, what can you do? Nothing. So why even consider that as a factor? That is my answer. Wasted energy. I actually tried to make it uh, an empowering um, position. So when I started my podcast, my target audience was women. I, I think I started by saying 50 and up, and then I said, okay, 45 and up. Um, and so I that was my audience because that's who I am. And that's who I wanted to speak to. So, you know, I, I've relaxed it a little bit because I also think that, you know, the wisdom that we have in our age group is something that should be shared with younger people so that they can have er experiences earlier in life. But my message, my podcast was to, initially I said to embrace change and it involve, evolved into a podcast um, talking about moving abroad, because that's something that I did. And I did it starting in my mid 40s. I think it was 46 when I first moved to the Middle East. And so I was my podcast was to encourage women in that age group to still seek opportunities to expand and to move abroad. Um, but I also think that this is something that younger people should consider at a younger age. And so that's why I, I've become more flexible in that because we want to encourage younger people to, uh, to consider this, um, you know, earlier in life. But really I um, used age as, um, you know, part of my platform because there's nothing we can do uh, as you mentioned, Gemma, about aging, right? The alternative is something that we're not looking forward to, which is dying. <laughs> so those are your two choices. Um, so I think, you know, just using that then as, as part of our voice and our wisdom. We bring a lot to the stage. We really, really do. And we should not tamp that down. That's just my two cents on it. Ladies, are we, when we look at podcasting, the industry, are we swimming in a red ocean? Is it just so saturated? Oh, there's no room for me. Why even get started? Oh, just. Oh, I'll just be a spectator. What do you all say about that? Is there plenty of room for everybody else? Lila. Well, I have something to say about that, of course. So, yes, there are a lot of podcasts. I think uh, Spotify said something about 2 million or even more uh, podcasts out there at the moment. Um, well, to, to come up with numbers again, of all the podcasts out there, there's only 4% of the podcasts that are still active and regularly posting new uh, episodes. That's only 4%. So if you can find a subject that you're passionate about and you can go beyond 10 episodes, you're in these 4%. So there's plenty of room. And to, you know, two, 2 million podcasts all across the globe, that's nothing. If you compare that to YouTube videos, they're like, 100 million videos per day or something like that. So 2 million, that's nothing. There's there's so much room still. So please start a podcast. Dr. Pat. 
I wanted to share it's more like 750 million podcasts are out there, but about 250 million are active. But I, I still think that that shouldn't deter anybody from wanting to do what they want to do. Because even those people who are doing them, they start it. And those who are highly successful, I think Joe Rogan is the highest paid and most popular pro uh, podcaster out there. But I say still do it. I mean, I, I think it is a little bloody, but so is all of the internet, you know, YouTubers, everybody else. So all of us who are in this room right now, I think it takes courage to do what we do and to do it on a consistent basis. And I would encourage anybody who's interested, because if you don't start, you don't know. So you've got to start at some point and uh, have the confidence that your show will meet whatever it is. I think it was Michelle who said, or maybe it was Allegra, I can't remember, but they did it because it was a personal thing that they wanted to do. And if somebody had said, don't do it, you're not going to be successful, they would have never started. Look at Allegra. She's been doing it for a decade or more. And so she's definitely a role model. And especially as part of a group that is a minority and a minority, she's doing great. And she gets satisfaction out of it. So I think if we can find our happy place, you know, and it brings you contentment, do it. Why not? And who knows, you may be the next whoever is doing a successful podcast. You never know. You never know. You, you never know. I think it was you, Dr. Pat, who said that, you know, they're, they, it's wide open because of the medium itself is wide open and it's a game changer that levels the playing field if we put in the, in the work. And I'm adding that part to it also. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Lila was on to something too, if I may interject here, if we sit and look at her as a producer who, you know, not, there aren't a lot of females out there who can do that. So look at her. She's ha she has her, it, it, it parlayed her into doing her own podcast and she's making money doing her production end of it. So I always encourage women to people period. I love people do whatever it is. If it's not causing harm to someone, go ahead and do it. Life is too short. We may get 80 to a hundred years to live here. And in the scheme of things, that's a short amount of time. If you want to do a podcast, do it. And Gemma, by the way, your gray hair is beautiful. It is. Yeah, I, I just want to add one more thing to that. Um, longevity is great. Allegra, I put, you know, raise my hat to you or whatever, you know. But also, I would like to encourage women to, if you have just a short story to tell, maybe it is a limited series that you would like to do. There's six episodes, but you get your message out there. It doesn't have to be a long-term commitment. And I think that a lot of the podcasts, when you're talking about the statistics, are some that people put their message out there and then they were done. So, um, you know, you may decide to continue the podcast, you know, throughout seasons, but maybe you just want to do one season. And I still would encourage you to do that because then your message still can touch someone else. I totally agree. Find your why, you know, maybe longevity is not going to match up with what you're supposed to do in this world, but match up your why get the grit and the gumption and the uh, the uh, inspiration and the know-how to go ahead and at least get started. I just have one final question for you ladies. And I want, I need to hear from each one of you. What advice do you have for others looking to become a podcaster? If there's one, because, you know, we already stated the numbers of the women. We are uh, black women as a whole. Globally, we are in a minority number getting started in this and staying in this arena. So what say you to each and every woman that's looking to get started? I think you were just touching very lightly on it. You have to understand why you want a podcast. So there were a number of people, don't hear shadedness. There were a number of people who started podcasts in the pandemic because they were bored but they didn't really have a story that they wanted to tell. They kind of didn't know why they wanted to do it. It just kind of gambled about like a bunny. And hey, if that was encouraging you and helping you connect with people while we were locked in, truth, no shade. But if you want to start a podcast, why do you want to start it? So my advice is to be very clear about who you want to talk to, why you want to talk to them, 
and then how you want to serve people. Because that's what helps you get past pod fade, right? A lot of people who start a podcast, but there's a scary amount of people who don't get past episode number seven because they didn't think before they picked up the mic what they would talk about in episode eight. They had like six episodes worth of stuff, but they said we're going to be here for a year doing an episode every week. So the why is very clear and you can see in your mind who it is that you're talking to and why you want to serve them. It helps you keep going because you're so very clear about what to talk about. I never run out of topics. <laughs> I run out of time, right? I run out of a lot of other things, but I don't run out of things that I want to talk about because I'm so clear about why I'm doing it. So I think excitement is great, but also have a plan. What are you going to do in episode 12 if you're doing 12 episodes, right? I would really chime in on that one, Allegra, for sure. That was my first exact answer. When you know why you start, when you know why you continue, when you know why you do not stop, you know what you say and who you talk to as a guest, if you are bringing on guests, and as an audience, even though you have not seen them, like I have 5,000 people watching, uh, listening to me, who are they? You have to have in mind whoever you think you are talking to. Because the people are going to match that and recognize you as an influencer when they are exactly your perfect audience. So this, those reasons that are that is a driving force from within, getting you up the morning, getting you up every week, organizing everything, interviewing potential guests to say, okay, so do you match exactly what I have in mind? Yes, you are in. No, keep on looking because you have you are amazing, but not on my show. Perfect. Everybody's happy. Because when you are also on the other side and you are on the audience side, you are exploring all the name of the podcast and then all the title of the episodes, it has to speak to your heart. So when you think so on the other side, you want to make sure to match with exactly, clearly what you bring on the stage. No shotgun approach. No scattergun shotgun. I'll just, I'll just spray myself everywhere. Somebody will pick me up. Let's not do that, correct, Gemma? I hear you, I hear you. My advice would be, be ready to work. Because it looks easy, but, you know, as Gemma and Allegra shared, knowing your target audience, having an avatar for who you're speaking to, because audio is, is about intimacy. And uh, it's as if you're talking to one person, whether you're talking to a million, but you're always talking to one person, right? But get ready to work. Like right now with a full-time job, I am still trying to produce that podcast. I'm a solo producer, so it's driven me to a point now where I've got to have someone to assist, but it, to, it's the consistency and the frequency. If you set up a schedule, make sure it's one that you can maintain. Um, mine is every two weeks, but then when I took on a new role at the university, I found that, you know, that was almost not manageable. So I had to come to the conclusion of, you know, you got to tell your audience what's going on, which I did. And I'm honest with them. And they've still been supportive, but be ready to work. Podcasting looks really easy and simple, but as Allegra said, they get to episode seven, you know, what eight is going to be about, you're in a quandary. So what I even did before I even opened the mic was I had uh, at least 50 topics to talk about um, and then some subtopics with that. I identified the first uh, five people that I was going to interview and I actually I did that. I went ahead and interviewed all of them and had them in the can. And then I was able to release every two weeks, schedule to release every two weeks, every two weeks. That gave me two months of additional prep time. And I also try to go by my semester schedule so that I can have some downtime. But uh, the advice I think the ladies have hit on is know your target audience, um, have that avatar of whom you're talking to, determine how long and how long, what your subject is. And because I started out as an hour, but I could see my statistics, you got to know how long people will listen to your podcast. So I've broken it down now to about half an hour to maybe 45 minutes. If it goes longer, I break it into two episodes. Um, 
and know that people are riding the bus or they're driving normally to work or taking a commute. And that podcast needs to fit within that time window. Um, also have something that's going to catch their attention. And I went into, I don't know if you all clubhouse, I don't hear a lot about it, but I remember going into one of those rooms and one guy who was highly successful at YouTube and a lot of media things, he said, tell me what your podcast is about. I thought I knew. And I started telling him a couple of sentences. He said, you need to break that down into one or two words. And he's your podcast is about women empowerment. I said, you're exactly right. So you've got to know what the podcast is about and what you're talking about. And um, yeah, but I would say too, it, it's not easy if you want to do it well. Well, it's talking a lot about, of practice. Go talking ahead, about doing it well, um, I agree with Pat. And one of the things that I advise my new client is to write up a list of at least 20 episodes, subjects, because then you have an idea of what you're going to talk about and you can break it up into sub uh, episodes. But I would say produce good quality podcast with a good audio sound, so a good microphone. Um, if you have a lot of background noises, people will stop listening because it's annoying especially if they're in the car and the, or in the train and they're listening and they hear lots of background noises, they will just stop listening. And that's, that's a waste. So I would say get a good microphone. It doesn't have to cost a lot. The one that I have is under a hundred dollars. So, and it works perfectly. So a good microphone, a good place to record and at least 20 episodes already in your mind before you start. That's it. Michelle, you want to round this conversation out? Yeah, I, well, I think that they've pretty much covered it. Um, it is more work. I, I think um, the, the first hurdle is getting those first episodes out. That can be overwhelming. So I think that it's very encouraging. Once you start to get your message out and you start getting feedback, then that gives you a little bit more you know, energy to continue, but it is a lot of work because it's not, you know, there's, there's the steps of, if you have guests, you need to secure guests for your podcast, the scheduling with the guests, the actual recording, then, you know, any post production editing and things like that. And then the marketing. So, uh, you know, and most of us are doing this on our own. So there are a lot of um, steps and that's why it is important to remember your why, know who your audience is so that you can keep focused on that and that will keep you going through all those hurdles. And then when you do get to a point where you can add people to your team, then I suggest that you do that because then take some of those responsibilities, give it to an expert that can get it done so that you can continue to, to deliver your message you know, on, on a schedule. But as Pat said, if, if what you have scheduled is overwhelming for you, because I think initially I was trying to do weekly episodes and then I did have to back up a little bit and say, okay, every two weeks, then I will have new episodes. So just put it at a pace that is comfortable. Some people I know have monthly episodes so if that works for you, then that's what you do. But once you've committed to that, then you you commit to your audience and, um, you know, continue, continue to deliver your message. Well, I tell you what, I have learned uh, from you ladies just in this short span of time that we have been together. I promised everybody an hour and we are coming up on that hour. So what I was going to do on the back end, uh, Dr. Pat and Allegra, Michelle, we're going to have to table that for another time because I do want to hold everyone to an hour. I thank you ladies for coming together and opening up to what it really looks like to be a female podcaster. You know, it's it's not an easy thing. It is not. And you have you found that you really have to be true to yourself? Is that where it really begins? Being true to yourself. I, I, I promise that's the final question. <laughs> that being true. Yeah, I promise. But that just came to me because I'm just thinking, how can we be effective and impactful to others? If we are, uh, as they say, faking the funk ourselves. What's one final question? What say you ladies to that? 
I think the, um, if I was going to add two other pieces to what keeps you podcasting, right? Cause we talked about advice for getting started. I think it's important to have a community of people who get it. So other people who are podcasting. So, um, cause podcasting can feel lonely, right? It's you alone with the mic. I'm not, saying even if you have guests, right, your piece of it is pretty solitary. So it's important to me that I have a community of people who understand what it is that I do, even though their podcasts are very different, to keep me sharp because I don't want to get sloppy and I don't want to start producing content that's my audience deserves better, right? So I think it's a community. And the other piece of that is the system. Because if I have a system of this is how I do things and I have to write stuff down, right? So it's like, here's how I work with my guests, right? Here's how I set my podcast website up, right? Here's how I create the post, right? I have systems for all of those things because then I'm not winging it and then I'm not having to get creative every time I do it. So it's easy for me then to focus on the important part, which is me showing up as me. And it enables me to say no to things because after you've podcasted for a bit, people are going to suggest things to you. Oh, do you want to participate in this? Or, oh, do you want to have this person come be a guest? Or in my case, I always have guys telling me I really need a guy as a co-host. Have you ever listened to an episode, honey? No, really. Have you ever listened to an episode? I clearly don't need a guy, (laughs) right? But it's easy to use the ruler of what my systems are to say no to things that come up because you have to say no to good things in order to say yes to great things. So my community helps me. Stay fire. We talked about that before we got on here live. (laughs) My community of people helps me stay fire and learning systems that work for me are important pieces to keep me going. You're on mute, Margo. Gosh, yeah, I'm just, uh, you see, I've gone into this. I'm just all in, still in the conversation. I'm glad that you brought that up, Allegra, because we get started, but that thing of pod fade is very, very real and burnout. And I've seen some really good shows cease to exist because lack of preparation, um, not understanding their why. So thank you for taking us there. I have to say goodbye to you ladies. I sure hate to. I really, really do. We're going to replay this total conversation on Friday, which is the official day, International Podcast Day. So starting at 12 noon, you ladies are going to head out the replay. I have had such a wonderful time. And anybody who wants to find out where your podcast is, is, I just say, wherever you get your favorite podcast, that's where you're going to find these ladies. All right. Somebody need a podcast producer. Here's Layla right here. I'm telling you. And she's large and in charge over on LinkedIn. So Gemma Serenity, Real Talk, Women Back, Breaking the Silence Around Abuse, Allegra Sinclair, Your Confident Self Podcast. She's also an executive coach. Michelle Words, Words with Michelle, the podcast. She's a blogger also into people telling their story. Dr. Pat Saunders, This Prof Life professor of communications. And I just found out you have quite an extensive broadcasting background. Wow. We're going to have to have a conversation. Lila Nort from Belgium, the office memo podcast producer and coach, my goodness. And myself, Marco Levette. I am a podcaster. I teach podcasting. I love podcasting. I really, really do. I almost get teary eyed. And when I think about the power that you ladies brought, I'm looking at the background here. You ladies brought the fire and I'm not a kid, but you brought the fireworks. And I pray that those who are listening, they took take note and they take action because ladies, we have to be heard. We have to own our conversation. We have every right to do so. So I'm going to go into a commercial. I'm going to say goodbye to the panelists, and then I'll be back to let everybody know what tomorrow looks like. Thank you, my dear panelists. I love you dearly. This concludes. It is episode number four from uh, International Podcast Day 2022. There were four segments I just absolutely had to have edited down into podcast form so that I could share them with you. You like what you heard? I know that you did. Now, if you are a podcaster, I trust that it took you, this information took you to another level. You're listening and you thought you wanted to be a podcaster? Well, don't think any longer. You heard what Finch said, get off 
defense. You want to become a podcaster? I can help you with that. In the meantime, go over to YouTube and you can watch the live stream, each and every live stream in totality. See everything, everyone in person, in the real. All right. Glean, be inspired, share out, listen once and listen again, because you were given textbook information. Remember, podcasting is a business. It goes hand in hand with media and you being an entrepreneur. I'm Margot Levette. It has been my pleasure to bring and host this segment for you. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.